another session of Indic Studies Toronto. Uh, today, the topic is significance of stone mandalas in Indian temples. Our speaker today is Srimati Rekha Rao, who has a master's degree in Indology from University of Mysore and is also an accomplished classical dancer. In the year 2000, she took up independent research work in Indology under the guidance of Dr. S.R. Rao, former Deputy Director General of ASI. Her interest in the temple sculptures has made her visit and study various temples in India, focusing on the script sculptures of Apsaras, Buddhist architecture, and Indus seals. So, Namaste Rekhaji, welcome, and please continue. Okay, am I audible? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Namaste, viewers. Many thanks to Index Studies Toronto and Samir Pandeji for inviting me to present my talk titled Significance of Stone Mandalas in Indian Temples. Mandala in Sanskrit means the whole world. Every Hindu temple has a huge saucer shaped circular domical ceiling on the inner roof of the mandapa that is a pillar hall. They are a very artistic and decorative part of temple architecture with intricate designs. An in-depth study revealed that they are sacred power diagrams of a particular configuration with elementary geometrical designs and motifs. A study of these circular mandalas in low domes revealed that they were intended to bring out the various aspects of cosmos in an artistic way. The significance of mandalas can be understood only after realizing what the symbolic patterns convey, or else they are passed off just as intricate designs looking beautiful. In today's talk, I explore the significance of these mandala patterns in the temple. I present slide one now. Yeah. The term mandala in uh, Sanskrit means circular and metaphorically the whole world. The pattern of mandala are mangalavar, meaning auspicious. Uh, they are intended to convey the flow of uh, spiritual knowledge symbolically, and hence the theme and execution vary from one mandala to the other. Uh, uh, can, you, can you present slide one? Some mandalas house the figure of the main deity in the center in a miniature form and the Abhimani Devatas, that is the secondary or follower deities in a symbolic form. The huge stone mandalas are a very important part of uh, Indian temple architecture. Before uh, moving on to the analysis of mandalas, I go through some architectural features of a typical Indian temple where mandalas are installed in a temple. A Hindu temple is a sacred public place for prayer called Devalaya or Devasthana in Sanskrit. Uh, I have presented slide two for the structure and the main features of a Hindu temple. The architectural principles of temples are described in Shilpa Shastra and Vastu Shastra. Temple architecture in India has many varieties of styles, though the basic nature of uh, Hindu temple remains the same. The inner sanctum called Garbhagraha or the womb chamber is the essential feature of all styles where the idol of uh, primary deity is housed. A shikara is constructed above the Garbhagraha. There are three major styles of temple architecture in India and the temple style is identified by the shikara structure. Firstly, the North Indian style, which is the, with a curvy shikara is called Nagara architecture. The South Indian style, Dravida architecture is with a stepped pyramidal shikara that rises geometrically and called Vimana. It ends with an octagonal crowning element called the Kupola. The third type, a fusion of Nagara and Dravida styles is called Vesara type of architecture. Now, regarding the prominent elements of, it, of uh, temple architecture, most of the temples are of a medieval period between 7th to 14th century CE. The layout of Hindu temple follows a mystical and geometrical design 
like a yantra known as Vastu Purusha Mandala. Vastu is the dwelling place, Purusha is the universal principle, and Mandala is the sacred diagram. The elements of a temple in a brief description are seen in the picture. Uh, going through that, uh, first point is, at the entrance of the premises of a temple is the Gopura, the huge tower that serves as the gateway to the temple complex. It is a prominent feature of temple complex and made very high so that people from far away could see the temple entrance. At the entrance of the temple is a small hall called Arthamantapa, like the veranda. This leads to a huge pillared assembly hall called Mantapa or Sabha Mantapa, where the devotees assemble and sit. Mandapa is called Navaranga when it has a dancing platform. Uh, third point is Mandala, Ma Mandapa is attached to a small cell called Antarala, a transitional space between the temple's main hall and the Garbhagruha. And Antarala leads to Garbhagruha. Fourthly, Garbhagruha is the small room of a sanctum sanctorum. Garbhagruha is where the idol of the main deity, either in a personified form or in a symbolic form, like uh, Shivalinga, is placed. It has a single entrance that faces its direction, and the wall is without a window. The shikara or the superstructure is above Garbhagriha, which marks the main vertical axis of the temple. Above the Garbhagriha is constructed the rising tower. It is equivalent to shikara or the vimana. This involves a dome called Amalaka. Above this is Kalesha, the finial stupi in the form of a pot and with a lancer-like fixture. These features can be seen in the picture presented. These components are believed to attract and gather maximum cosmic energy. The external wall of the temple is decorated with the many figures involving the episodes of mythologies, Puranas, and the semi-divine figures of Apsaras, Yakshas, Yakshis, Gandharvas, and so on. Now, on the inner side of the roof of the pillared assembly hall, Mantapa, several exquisitely carved solid pillars support the inner ceiling. The ceiling has one or more highly decorative stone structures called Bhuneshwari Mandala. The number of mandalas in a temple may vary in number according to the size and dimension of the pillar hall. The term Bhuneshwari is from the root word Bhuvana, meaning Earth in Sanskrit. The three words, heaven, atmosphere, and earth are symbolically represented in the concentric circles of the mandala. This architectural element is as sacred as the main deity. Today's presentation is focused on the types of stone mandalas that are in the inner ceiling of the Sabha Mantapa, where the devotees assemble. Uh, these mandala structures are believed to be centers of gathering positive energy and hence negativity hardly exists in Sabha Mantapa. I present slide three now. Uh, this is about the location of stone mandalas in a temple. The picture shows where and how mandalas are seen in the Mandapa hall. Regarding the purpose of installing such mandalas, the ornate and artistic expression of some mandalas was intended to codify the governing laws of nature. It was structured in the shape of an unfolded umbrella. Ancient sages of India believed in propagating knowledge of the cosmos through mandalas. Mandalas stand for an eye-opening philosophy stating that all are created by him and all get absorbed into him. There are innumerable Bhuvaneshwari mandalas in Indian temples that have both philosophical knowledge and scientific information. The mandalas of uh, Sabha Mantapa on the inner ceiling of the assembly hall are circular or square-shaped patterns. The circular mandalas are low domes of saucer shape. They are symmetrical and with self-repeating fractal designs. These uh, designs are derived from the primary convictions, traditions, fundamentality, and mathematical standards. 
Uh, let's now explore the figure of uh, different types of mandalas. I present slide four for this. Uh, in the slide four, we can see different examples of mandalas in different temples. There are four pictures of different designs that are carved in temples. The significance of placing a highly decorative and intricately carved stone mandala on a high ceiling was uh, because they were auspicious structures. These auspicious designs were beyond human physical contact like touching and hence placed high on the inner room. They played an important role in places of worship and were believed to be a source of mystical power that enhanced peace and positive energies in devotees. I present slide five now. Uh, this uh, slide five is for the components of a mandala. Every mandala has three important features, which are the center point, the concentric circles, and the square boundary. The mandala of the temple usually looks like an umbrella spread, structured like a dome. The concentric uh, circles called balaya are at different levels, observing geometrical progression in the con consecutive levels. They look very artistic and decorative with huge circular diagrams. Mandalas were intended to symbolize the mysteries of universe and hence are a circle eternity. It uh, symbolizes the different aspects of the cosmos. Every mandala has three components. Firstly, mandalas in temple show a central point, the source of knowledge, which is called Bindu. It signifies the complex concept of Purusha, the unmanifested primordial energy, meaning the cosmic man or the consciousness. It is commonly represented symbolically in mandalas by the motif of an inverted or pendant lotus bud, or sometimes it may also be in personification of the main deity also. Around the central point, the body of mandala has three or five concentric circles, they are called valaya. All circles have patterns of lotus bud in varying sizes. The lotus bud motif repeats in all circles as fractals. These designs are beyond mere decoration and symbolize some aspect of the cosmos. The circles of Valaya in Mandala shows different shapes of petals. Each shape has its own significance and the number of petals or geometric patterns strictly adhere to the number symbology. The third feature of a Mandala is the protective square boundary like a courtyard called Bhupura. The square boundary symbolizes the stability uh, of the central deity and the cosmos. The corners of the square boundary usually have kirti mukhas. Uh, we now explore the analysis of, of the philosophical and scientific perspectives involved in mandalas. Today, I would like to present my analysis of four stone mandalas carved in temples. Each mandala explains a different theme of the cosmos. The first picture I present is about the cosmic bionity and the creation of life forms. I present slide six. Slide six shows a case study of one big circular mandala at the Somnathpur temple in South India. Uh, the temple was built during 13th century CE by the Hoysala dynasty. The slide shows two views of the same mandala and a part of it is zoomed. Regarding the structure of the big circular mandala, it shows the central point Bindu depicted like a pendant lotus bud. The first circle is, uh, uh, the first circle around it shows 16 sharp radiating petals and a circle of 16 full-blown lotus motifs. The central bindu signifies Purusha in a symbolic form. The 16 pad Padmas are indicative of the 16 parts Shodasha Kala of Purusha, which are the five Karmendriyas, five Nanendriyas, Mana, Buddhi, Ahankara, Chitta, Nama and Chetana. 
the 16 uh, parts are depicted as abhimani devatas in a symbolic form this is followed by three more circles of the valaya uh, the mandala's unique feature is that each concentric circle has round shaped petals each petal has a repeating fractal design that looks like the two halves of a grain or a legume the grain is an emblem of our potentiality and the two halves are compared to Shiva and Shakti forces. Grain uh, symbolizes two fundamental forces of creation, the male and female. The concept of creation has been depicted in a symbolic representation. In Vedic uh, scriptures, sages have contemplated on the origin of life. The egg-shaped cosmic energy of a bright light in golden color uh, arose out of darkness and the constant churning of a primordial water. This was called Brahmanda. Anta means an egg. From this Brahmanda, a male form emerged. This energy uh, of a life form then split into two equal parts as the primordial male and female forces. This uh, philosophical aspect is uh, depicted in the structure of the mandala. The realization of dissolving the boundaries between man and divine is beautifully brought out in the symbolic fractals of the mandala. Let's now look at the scientific analysis of this mandala. The two halves of the grain in the petal of the mandala are positioned as equal and opposite. It's a metaphoric representation of genders that complement each other. Each rounded petal is the representation of matter that is made up of two types of charges. By convention, they are called positive and negative charges. These charges exist in nature and can neither be created nor destroyed. The polarity is also explained by the combination of static and dynamic forces in an abstract form. They are two opposite forces uh, or charges that attract each other or else the two halves would have been placed in a consecutive pattern. This mandala is a striking representation of cosmic bionity, the union of opposites as Shiva Shakti forces that generate energy. One half cannot produce life without the other. Ancient Hindus depicted this scientific concept through this mandala. Let's now look at another case study. I present slide seven. It shows a square mandala uh, made in a rocket cave uh, in, uh, in a place called Badami in South India. It was constructed during sixth century CE. Uh, this uh, mandala has a swastika square mandala the structure of the square mandala of Badami cave is with uh, uh, interconnected swastikas and marut cards. The inner roof of the rocket cave has mandala of nine square bridge. The central design has four interconnected swastikas around it. In the four corners of the mandala, there are figures of a group of flying storm gods called marut gods. The interconnected swastikas give the appearance of a labyrinth pattern. Such mandalas were usually employed in the concluding ceremonies of religious observances, like the construction of a temple. Mandalas assure fruitfulness when installed, giving excellent results in reaching specific goals. The significance of swastika and murut gods is essential uh, to the understanding of this mandala. Swastika is an auspicious and traditionally a Hindu symbol that can be traced back to early Indian history of uh, Indus Valley civilization. It is a motif drawn to drive away evil. The etymology of uh, swastika is su plus asti in Sanskrit, signifying that which is uh, associated with well-being. It's therefore a symbol of peace, good fortune, good luck and prosperity. The four interconnected swastikas hint about the regularity and eternal cyclic movement of the seasons controlled by the sun. 
Sun is depicted symbolically in the center enclosed in a square boundary. The four interconnected swastikas hint about the regularity and eternal cyclic movements of the seasons controlled by the sun. It is analyzed to be the rotation of seasons because they are connected to Marut cards. I present slide eight now for the depiction of Marut gods. Uh, the four weather gods depicted in the corners of the mandalas are according to how they are described in Vedas. The unpredictable and destructive power of natural forces is depicted by the Murut gods. They are labeled A, B, C, and D uh, in the zoo pictures. Uh, figure A, it shows clear clouds of spring and the comfortable weather. The arrow mark shows uh, how clouds are shown in a panel in architecture. Uh, figure B is Marut's carrying a sword signifying thunderbolt. Figure C, Marut's carrying axe. Axe and hammer are symbolic of uh, tremors in art. Figure D is Marut with the flying ropes representing strong wind. Maruts are described in Rigveda as the cloud bearing flying weather gods of storm or tempest. They are iconographically depicted with the concerts as youthful flying gods of atmosphere. They are well adorned, carrying war equipment like a sword, hammer, or an axe on their shoulder. This, the unpredictable and destructive power of natural forces that surface thumbs sometimes is due to the moods of the Maruts. Let's now look at the scientific knowledge that prevailed during that period, that is 6th century CE and depicted in this mandala. Sun was thought to be static and non-moving and hence depicted the center of the mandala as a circular full blue lotus bound by a square. The square boundary symbolizes stability. Uh, oh, I, um, hello, um, I'm still in, uh, yeah, yeah, that's a slide I wanted. Uh, Mandela as a, the Moro gods in the corners and the interconnected swastikas around the sun depict the movement of cyclical rotation of seasons around the sun. This pattern hints that objects at rest, uh, here it's the sun, continue to be at rest and objects seen the movement continue to be moving eternally. The seasonal changes, whether it is summer, winter, monsoon, floods or storm or drought, go by rotation in eternal cycles. Marut gods were revered and worshipped in mandala so that the unpredictable severity of natural calamities was under control and does not turn out to be destructive. The artistic patterns in mandalas depict the philosophical and scientific understanding of that period. They played an important role in places of worship and were believed to be a source of mystical power that enhanced peace and positive energies. This is about the square mandala of Badani Cave Temple. Now, uh, proceeding to the third and fourth topics, they are about the two popular theories of universe. Uh, they are the oscillating uh, theory of the universe and the steady state theory of the universe. I present slide nine for this. Slide nine for the depiction of oscillating theory of the universe. Temples were centers for the dissemination of knowledge in Indian society. Temple devotees were introduced to science of physics, mathematics, astronomy, medicine, arts, and philosophy through temple panels and sculptures. In ancient times, the study of physics was neither formalized nor separated uh, from other branches of knowledge. The birth of universe, evolution, size, and age of the cosmos was beyond ordinary human understanding. 
complex concepts were often conveyed through the structures and sculptures. The birth and expansion of the universe is one such uh, complex concept that is depicted in many temple mandalas. We now explore the two theories about the birth and evolution of the uh, universe as depicted in Indian temples. We'll then go through the philosophical and the scientific interpretations of the mandala. This is with examples of two case studies of how the theory was depicted in mandalas. In this, uh, the slide has uh, two views, uh, the, the view of a Bhuneshwari mandala at the Belavadi Veeranarayana temple of South India, built during 11th century CE. The depiction is comparable to the oscillating uh, universe theory about the expansion and contraction of the universe. The oscillating theory of the universe is also known as the Big Bang Theory. The Big Bang Theory says that 18 billion years ago, all the matter of the present universe was initially packed in the primeval fireball, which exploded with tremendous force. All matter in the universe started expanding and moving away from each other. The Big Bang Theory proposes the forward and backward movement, backward motion with the expansion and contraction of the universe. When it contracts, it eventually melts into a hot plasma of dissolution, ending in the big crunch. A nearly identical version of this theory is proposed in the Vedas, the oldest scriptures of Hinduism. In the Vedas, this theory was called Hiranyagarbha Sutra. Uh, before going to the analysis, we look into the structure of the mandala. The mandala of the temple looks like an umbrella spread of uh, star sparklers contained in a square boundary. The central point, which is the primordial singularity, is in the motif of the conical lotus pot. Encircling this are three distinct layers of concentric circles decorated with miniature replicas of the central conical bud. All conical buds are connected by longitudinal strips to the source point. They are uniform in all directions. They increase in size uh, from the inner to the outer circles in mathematical equation. Finally, it is enclosed in a square boundary. Now, studying the interpretation of this mandala from a Vedic perspective, according to Vedas, the exit cosmic energy of bright light arose out of darkness from the constant churning of our primordial water. This was called Brahmanda. From this ball of energy, the golden gem, considered as the universal life force, as the creator deity, in a male form called Purusha, appeared. Purusha's form aspired that he should be present in a micro form in all uh, creations of the universe. He split himself into a million parts, pervading all things in all directions, and he entered all creations. Purusha, the source of energy, has been symbolized in the mandala as the central lotus bud. The miniature replicas of birds are repeated in uh, all concentric circles as fractal representations, supporting Purusha's presence uh, in a micro form in all his creations. From a scientific perspective, since the exact period of uh, birth of universe was not known, time indicated by the long strips in this mandala, time was believed to have started ticking when the self-created energy emerged. Space and matter expanded simultaneously in all directions, which is shown as growing concentric circles. When the mandala is absorbed from center to outwards, it is the theory of expansion. When we view from outer circle to inner core, Mandala depicts the involuting process of oscillating universe theory. The space and matter diminish back to the high density zone and merge with the primordial energy. The mandalas stand for an eye-opening philosophy, stating that all are created by him and all get absorbed into him. We will now explore slide 10. Uh, this slide. Slide 10 illustrates the other theory 
the steady state theory and rhythm of life in universe as depicted in the mandala. This mandala is from uh, Somnathur temple in South India, built in Hoysala style during 13th century CD. The steady state uh, model is an alternative to Big Bang theory, which proposes that although the universe is expanding, the creation does not change in appearance over time. The universe has no beginning, not end, according to this theory. This requires that matter be continuously created to keep the density constant. Now, observing the structure of the mandala, in this mandala, the central dot is a conical bud from which arises 12 radiating spokes of a wheel. Uh, each spoke is interspersed with two dots. According to numerology, 12 spokes denote 12 months of the year, and the two dots signify the two fortnights of the month. Around the spokes, there, are, there is a labyrinth pattern with an interwoven design that neither has a beginning nor an end. This design further has continuous creeper-like pattern within uh, with a repeating scroll work. Scroll work is all through the design. Uh, let's now study the interpretation of this mandala. It looks like a closed circuit diagram giving the picture of fluid but rhythmic movement. From a philosophical perspective, a spiral design signifies continuity and ongoing process. The circular units of the spiral design represent continuity of life through, uh, through generations. A life that is born grows uh, and gives birth to its younger replicas. These young replicas form the following generation. All activities are governed by the constant supreme power, the sun, the donator of energy for all living beings. The continuous scroll pattern is of the same design, which is parallel to the steady state theory that states, although the universe is expanding, it does not change its appearance over time. It also signifies the continuous creation of matter. From a scientific perspective, the spiral shape in the mandala also depicts the law of conservation of energy, which uh, states that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. The total energy of an isolated system is constant, but can change its form from one to another. This concept is depicted in a pictorial form in this mandala. I present slide 11 now. Let's now look at an example of how steady state theory was depicted in sculptures. It is an example of a pillar from the Sun Temple of Mudhara in Gujarat, West India. This was built around uh, 1026 AD. The interesting tall pillar has miniature figures of human couples depicted one above the other. This symbolizes the continuum of human life and the process of linking the past to future. The new generations succeed the prior generation as time passes by. This concept is depicted from bottom to top of the pillar. The four bigger figures in the middle uh, is the deity sun god in sitting posture. And he is in a personified form. The four sections are across the four long periods called Chaturyugas. The sun has been depicted as a constant immortal source across all four yugas. The right side of the picture depicts a similar creeper-like structure. The total energy of an isolated system is constant, but can change its form, form from one to another. This concept of flow of life energy is depicted in a pictorial form in this structure. Now, uh, coming to conclusion, I would like to summarize the key uh, learnings from this talk. Mandalas are circular or square shaped patterns found in the inner ceiling of the assembly hall in every Hindu temple. The artistic patterns in mandalas depicted the philosophical and scientific understanding of that period. They are always located in the ceiling of the hall where devotees assemble. They played an important role in places of worship and were believed to be a source of mystical power 
that enhanced peace and positive energies. Indian temples were centers of knowledge that depicted both the creation and the steady state theory of the universe. These complex concepts of philosophical and scientific perspectives are amalgamated in the mandala patterns. They were conveyed through intricate details of mandalas which need, which need careful observation to explore the concealed knowledge in them. Hinduism had practical scientific knowledge of the operation of the universe, which was amalgamated with religion. The secrets of the cosmic order as understood in the ancient period have been conveyed through mandala patterns in temples. At present slide 12 now. Uh, this book titled Science and Golden Issues in Mandala Architecture, published by D.K. Flintwald, is authored by me. Several mandala patterns of temples are discussed in this book. I have also explored how golden ratio geometry was part of sculptures in temples. With this, I end my talk. Thanks everybody. Thanks Savir Pandeji for the cooperation. Namaste. Thank you, Rekha ji. That was a wonderful presentation about mandalas. Now we will open the floor for questions. If anyone has any question, you can raise your hand in the chat in the participants window. And uh, I will unmute you uh, one by one and you can ask any questions. Yeah. Uh, Indic seminars, please go ahead. Uh, namaste, this is uh, Prasad here. Um, I know that there are several type of uh, mandalas across various temples. Some are flat, some are, you know, this uh, very architecturally driven. So, you know, the scientific background or the representation of the galaxy and the universe within the mandala is fascinating. So the different variations of the mandala, do they depict the same thing or is it some of the mandalas are more uh, geared towards art rather than all this scientific background. Yeah, it's a combination of knowledge and art. Because, uh, you know, uh, uh, artistic representation was amalgamated with uh, scientific knowledge in India temples. This we can see even in the temple structure, the sculptures, whatever it is, there's a lot of information concealed but projected very artistically. Many temples have this uh, type of uh, um, about the universe uh, theory. Many temples have this uh, this particular design. That means uh, the sages have attempted the uh, sculptors have attempted, and the uh, sponsor, the sculptors wanted to project the theory of uh, knowledge through through mandalas. Kishanji, please go ahead. Yes. Hello, ma'am. Uh, yeah. My question is, uh, I have heard um, in South India, there are five different temples dedicated to five uh, basic elements. So um, are there any like uh, representation uh, of these uh, elements uh, uh, through mandala? Yeah, yeah. E elements... Uh... You know, each uh, element has uh, its own depiction. Like, uh, you know, one mandala depicts about sound waves. Another mandala is about the uh, light waves, how they travel. Uh, light waves, how they travel and uh, um, the details regarding to light theory, the details regarding to the pitch and uh, sound waves theory. There are many mandala, many topics are discussed. Uh, this, these are definitely related to the elements of nature because uh, the flow of uh, the the flow of uh, uh, element air is responsible for sound waves and uh, many themes are like that depending on uh, the elements of nature it is there uh, vivek ji please go ahead 
Namaste, uh, Namaste, Ram, ma'am. I just want to ask that how you see the uh, the temple architecture and the mandala of the Angkor Wat. Have you studied over that? Uh, because I find that it's very much uh, similar to the few of the temples which was made in the China. It's very much uh, different from the Nagar uh, kind of uh, architecture. Is somewhat similar to the olden uh, Greek civilization also, and uh, some kind of, and its relation with the Orion constellations is linked with the pyramids also. Have you have some knowledge about that? Uh, I'm sorry, I haven't studied in detail about Angkor Wat, but I have seen the uh, the pictures. Angkor Wat, uh, a, every you know the temples constructed in. Uh, other parts of the world were influenced by the regional architecture and styles and the themes. Uh, for example, the Ramayana theme is depicted differently in Malaysia and uh, Indonesia. The representation also changes. They use the regional uh, dress code and other things, and even in mandalas. Uh, but I haven't studied much of mandalas outside. My focus was only on uh, the, especially the Hoysala and the Indian temples, because these tropics are oceanic in nature. Uh, it was quite tough to study the 10 mandala patterns, 10 or 12 mandalas. So they are different. The mandalas in other countries, like in China, they are slightly different because the regional knowledge is also involved in that, in the architecture. Nurada ji, please go ahead. Uh, Namaste Rekha ji, uh, beautiful presentation. Uh, I want to know, I have studied a lot of temples and I've seen most of the temples you've mentioned. And also in Ajanta caves, also you see the similar mandalas painted, if not carved. Uh, so I want to know, is there a particular reason that these mandalas are always on the ceiling? Yeah, mandalas are mostly on the ceiling. They're called, the Vaisalas gave the specific term Bhuvaneshwari Mandala, uh, because uh, as I said, they are auspicious designs and mystical designs. They are not to be touched or handled by commoners, by people. They were sacred designs. They are mostly uh, on the roof. There may be some mandala designs on the uh, walls also, like the, um, you know, the lotus pattern, the lotus petals in five or uh, three or five or nine concentric circles. Some mandalas are also, we can see on the dwara or the huge doors of temples. They are symbolic of, uh, you know, the, with the same thing. The five layers uh, are uh, symbolically represent the, uh, the five worlds, the three worlds, whatever they have got. So Jinnah ji, please go ahead. Uh, hello, ma'am. So mainly Hoysala and Chalukyan mandalas. So I just want to know if across all dynasties they followed a similar uh, form of square and circle or were they different uh, based on the region and the type of uh, sculptors available? And the second question was, were mandalas uh, originally a structural element of the ceiling of the mantapa, uh, which were later decorated to uh, have this philosophical meaning behind them. Thank you. Yeah, mandalas were always in the assembly hall because where people gather. Uh, the ceiling, uh, you know, you can see uh, uh, why it is in the mandapa is people gather and there shouldn't be any negative activity in the temple. The center point uh, of the huge mandalas were believed to be gatherers of positive energy. So it was invariably in the assembly pillar hall only. Karbhupraha uh, doesn't have a mandala and uh, usually Antarala doesn't have uh, or then usually in the Gopra also mandalas are not uh, carved. It's only in the um, mandapa hall, sabha mandapa because people gather there and they learn something, they know something, they are moved to positive energy there. So these uh, were called protectors of positive energy, these mandalas. That's why they were always placed high. And sorry, what was your first question? Uh, 
हेलो I think she is uh, muted now. Okay, I'll go for the next question. Uh, Atul ji, please go ahead. Uh, good evening, madam. Uh, okay. Thanks for a very beautiful uh, understanding about the mantras. I would like to. Uh, I my question is two things. One thing is that the uh, is the number of the uh, uh, petals has some hmm. significance. And have you studied? Uh, is is the number of the petals are same or similar or some multiplication of the numbers? Point number one. Point number two. In one or two places, I have seen that the the mandalas is placed on the the uh, uh, mandalas is very very heavy. Maybe around eighty or hundred tons or so. So how they such a carved beautiful uh, stone carving? They have placed it on the top of the temple. Oh. Uh. Yeah, madam. Uh, regarding uh, uh, the first question is about uh, the petals. Yeah. Yeah. There are I I have discussed this in my book. There are five to six types of petals. Uh, the tantric uh, theme. The, if the temple has tantric theme, or if tantric uh, the information is conveyed through mandala, the shape is different. It's a broad leaf-like uh, structure. There is one like gomukha that. Um, Go go karna. That is the shape of a cow's ear. It's also there. Uh, the some uh, when the designation of knowledge is uh, where conveyed, the some petals are very sharp like needles. There are so many varieties in petals, and all these petals, uh, the details are discussed in the book. And uh, number of uh, petals is definitely according to numerology. Every number has a significance. And depending on the activity of the deity or the cosmos, these uh, uh, these things observe the number symbology, numerology, as well as the shape of the petals, the significance of petals. You can find this if you observe mandalas from temple to temple. It it differs in shape. The petals differ in shape. And uh, uh, there are some mandalas. Uh, you know, when the it is a full bloom lotus. Lotus uh, design. It's uh, it goes continuous in many numbers. It indicates the expansion of uh, mind or happiness. Uh, Vishnu is symbolic of that expansion of uh, uh, peace of mind. So Vishwanath uh, Dhamji, please go ahead. These uh, figures are depicted in the these patterns. The five circle lotus or uh, nine uh, circle lotus. These are depicted in temples uh, in a continuous way. They are with the same thing. Namaste, madam. I am Vishwanatham here. Uh, thank you very much for this very enlightening uh, session. You told that the mandalas are evolutionary in their significance. and today we are having so many new temples being constructed with the phenomenal and very unique knowledge about mandalas that you cultivated are you prescribing any designs for the contemporary mandalas in today's times yeah uh, mandalas i don't uh, i think mention that evolutionary in their uh, structure they depict evolution of universe the the growth the big bang big crunch the theories about universe birth of universe birth of life forms those uh, topics mm, i don't uh, say the mandalas uh, i don't trace the evolution of mandala structures in temples because even in 6th century uh, badami cave has some more many more mandalas which are beautiful and with lot of uh, both philosophical and scientific perspectives so uh, the present day temples uh, it all depends on the sthapati and the sponsor of the temple what they want to project they can definitely draw ideas from the uh, other mandalas and uh, um, what they want to project in a temple is it just decorative aspect suppose they put uh, apsaras apsaras also come in different themes it can be a social theme it can be a, a ayurvedic theme or may many topics the axis are there like that whatever the builder wants to project they are conveyed 
because the contents of uh, mandala themes are infinite and uh, the working of universe is in internet. Any one aspect is depicted in a temple and the present day temples can certainly draw the copy the design from this and uh, with a concept and understand of what they are doing. Deepak Ji, please go ahead. Yes, thank you. Yes, madam, very beautiful presentation. Thank you very much. It is indeed intriguing how in those ancient times, skilled laborers were available for such intricate architecture and designs. Yeah. Oh. Not only that, people had understanding of both scientific and philosophical, as well as the stone knowledge, geology knowledge, our uh, Puranas, our Vedic knowledge. They were perfect in, uh, they were thorough with so many branches of knowledge. If they knew about physics, as I said, it was not separated from religious uh, uh, topic. They were amalgamated. Science was uh, combined with uh, religion. And these are the representations, the proof for what type of uh, knowledge was uh, uh, understood by people in olden days also. Sarjan so, ji, can you uh, repeat your first question? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, ma'am, uh, I was asking, uh, are the forms of the mandalas, uh, they, do they maintain the square and circular form throughout all dynasties? Because we saw examples of Hoysala and Chalukya in your presentation. Yeah, hmm. yeah it's... Uh, across uh, all dynasties, do they have similar forms? Yeah. Suppose you see the Mount Abu temple, it has a very intricately carved mandala in the pillar hall. And the theme is uh, different. Uh, um, it is about the Jain gods, how uh, some philosophical aspect related to Jain uh, uh, understanding, Jain uh, philosophy. So like that, a Shiva temple uh, definitely has even uh, the Hoysala temple has another square mandala where uh, the structure of the mandala depicts how two figures are to be drawn, three figures are to be drawn, how golden uh, ratio is cutting, and how do you draw a single figure in a small frame and giving out the perfect human structure. A mandala need not uh, be only about the cosmos or uh, related to gods. There are so many things, even art was taught through mandalas. I have worked on this mandala and uh, golden ratio, it's in the uh, Halebitu temple. Somnathpura has over uh, eight, nine mandalas. So many mandalas are there in Somnathpur. Mm, uh, so uh, all dynasties are observed, but I haven't studied all the um, temple mandalas of uh, other dynasties. Umapati ji, please go ahead. Even Buddhist temple have a different uh, type of mandalas. Uh, but I haven't worked on those things. My understanding was with Hoysala and uh, Badani Chalukya. Yeah, that's all. I, 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 I think I should study the other mandalas in other dynasties too. As I said, Mount Abu is very complicated uh, mandala they have. Mapatiji, please go ahead. Oh, Balaprasthan ji, please go ahead. Uh, hello, ma'am. That was a great presentation. Thank you for the efforts and uh, you know, we had a great time listening to it. Uh, so I have a question with respect to, you know, uh, the architecture. So going by what you said, depiction of mandalas in the mandapa roof is a very important uh, aspect of the temple. So is the true arch type of architecture not the best form to achieve the intricate work of a mandala in the, uh, you know, mandapa roof? I mean, is that the reason why corbel roof was used in Indian temples, despite the knowledge of true arch known to ancient or medi med medieval Indians? Uh, the structure of uh, constructing a dome was known to Indians. One of the temples, I think it's the Itaki Mahadeva temple has a, uh, has a um, mandala design which states 
how the tomb needs to be structured, what should be the division in each uh, radial uh, uh, spoke. Uh, okay. So uh, it is the mandalas are uh, with uh, different themes actually. So what was the other second part? Your question? No, uh, what I had actually wanted to know was, uh, as you know, the architecture which was predominantly used in uh, medieval India was corbel roofs, corbelled arches and corbelled roofs, right? We did not use uh, true arches until the advent of, uh, you know, the Islamic invaders and we have the depictions of, you know, true arches in uh, Vijayanagar Hampi. So no. my other uh, reason... Uh, uh, sorry, my, uh, I have worked on this uh, roof structure, the dome structure. Uh, okay. It is definitely not uh, uh, introduction from Islam architecture. India no, no, I, I understood your point. In because we have it in... the mandala is very precisely depicts how the structure, the doom needs to be. It's in the cover page of the book that shows okay. how the what should be the division. And the St. Uh, Peter's Basilica, I think it has structured the dome exactly on this plan. The architecture, okay. I have compared both pictures. Uh, what is there in Itigi Temple? Itigi Temple uh, dates much uh, earlier. So it's a dome structure. But only thing is Hindus, uh, Indians did not specialize on making domes. They specialized in making Vimanas and uh, Shikaras. So, but they knew the intricacies and the geometry for perfect dome construction and it is depicted in mandala structure. But it is definitely not uh, uh, one of the temples of Tolika temple has a dome and it hasn't cracked. Whereas the uh, domes that were constructed uh, earlier in 14, 15 centuries, uh, they, they were undergoing stress and they, were, they used to develop a crack. So the, the perfect uh, nature of building a dome has been depicted in mandala structure. Only thing is we did not adopt a dome structure in our temples. It, it was a pyramidal structure or the curvilinear uh, Vesara architecture, Nagara architecture. Swamiji, please go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. Actually, Madam, your uh, work is highly commendable. Uh, you made a reference to Shikara. If, during your study, did you ever come across Brahmanda Shikara or Brahmanda Mandala? Brahmanda Mandala. Brahmanda Mandala is the, it's about the, the that's what I described. The Brahm, Brahm I, I'm not very sure about Brahmanda Shikara. Uh, I have to work on archaeology of Shikaras. Uh, yeah, actually, I don't know whether Yes, please. I, I have gone through Brahman Deshikara, but uh, I haven't studied that in detail. The concept of uh, Brahmanda and the Hiranagarbha Sutra is there in mandalas. So actually what, what is known is before 1200 years, because of these Islamic invasions, all the Brahman Deshikaras were destroyed because Brahman Deshikaras were built by fixing spatikas and precious stones. Hmm. They, they were uh, attracting the cosmic energy very quickly. Yeah, yeah. Cosmic energy. Yeah, I know. And uh, if, you, if you observe, there is one temple in uh, Sri Lanka with only one spatika in the shikra. And people say there is a movement of aliens. As we say, devatas. We say devatas and others say aliens. But in India, luckily I got that uh, design and we are going to implement it. It will be more advantageous for me if you have any more information on that. If you want, I can share that uh, uh, design also. Yeah, sure. I am interested. Please share. Yeah, you can send it to my email address. Yeah. Yeah, can you surely please, uh, I will look into it about Brahman yeah. Shikara and uh, precious stones. Why our temples were got destroyed is precious stones. Exactly. Uh, one part of uh, temple architecture in the form of adornments or in the, uh, the um, door in the postillo or the front uh, step, what we call stones yeah. were, uh, and under the figure also, main deity, 
precious yeah. stones were uh, there. So these are with uh, you know some power, cosmic power that are drawn in from these uh, precious stones. So uh, for that reason, also many temples got destroyed. They used to dig the Shivlinga to find if there are any uh, precious stones there. But um, I haven't come across precious stone in the Shikara part. Please send me the details. I really want to know about this. Umapati, please go ahead. Ji, uh, namaste. Uh, I would like to ask a question, uh, madam. Do you have uh, any direct uh, uh, primary uh, textual reference for it? Actually, from the Shilpa, fr from the Shilpa text. Uh, no, only uh, textual reference I could not get because when uh, Dr. Yassa Rao asked me to work on this topic and he explained temples have um, a kind of cosmic energy and people behave differently inside the temple. And once they are outside the temple, their mood changes. They are different. Uh, so no, you no. work on this. So I could not get find any book that described the mandalas. It was all my work, original work. And I consulted an astrophysicist uh, by name Panimeni Udeshankar. She's a professor of astrophysics to know the details about uh, the knowledge of physics. So being uh, it is a very important topic, as yeah. you stated, it is very surprising that there is no, no evidence yeah. from the Shilpa text. From the Shilpa, I tried to know that I could not find any book uh, or um, my insight may be less. It is a, is it are part of architecture. I could get all the details about the outside sculptures, the theme of them, uh, the proportions used. Uh, even in this, even in these mandalas, proportions are there, but uh, uh, how they managed to construct it about that, I haven't studied. I didn't get any book about that. Thank Must you very be, much. I should uh, refer uh, Vastu uh, books, Vastu Shilpa. We have uh, reached uh, about one hour. Uh, I think we have reached our time limit. So we would like to conclude now, if you don't mind. And uh, thank you everyone for uh, coming for this presentation. And thank you, Rekhaji, for such a wonderful presentation. Thank you. It thank was uh, eye-opening. And uh, we have, uh, we'll now, every time we visit the mandir, we'll look at the uh, mandala more carefully. We usually yeah. just, yeah. That's that's a good statement. I want people to observe what is there and how beautifully, how scientifically they are carved. Thank you for giving me an opportunity. Okay, thank you, Rekaji. Thank you, uh, audience. Uh, we look forward uh, for you to join us in the next uh, presentation.